Well, good evening. And good health to you, my pedigree chums. Here we are again on a lovely Thursday evening. Seven o'clock and I'm about to paint. Seven o'clock and we're going to rock. Let's get ready for some rock and roll. Um, yeah, so this week, um, what are we going to do? We are going to change things around. It's exciting. It's really exciting. I'm just trying to pull it up really, but yeah, it's going to be exciting. What I'm going to do is I am going to change um, the background to one of the pieces I was working on recently. Um, because I don't like it. And if I don't like it, you ain't going to go for sale. So and if you ain't going to go for sale, what's the point, frankly? So here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to change the piece. That one. The black's not going on well. This is quite, can you see that? I don't know whether you can see the bit, that that's not really not very good there. And all around here, you can see it just looks like, cut, looks like I've cut it and stuck her on. I don't like the contrast. I don't like the way it's got onto the canvas. I just don't like it. You can see lots of half shiny bits and dull bits. It just looks unpleasant. So it's got to change. Um, not happy with that either. Don't like it. Um, it's not happening. So, so I am going to do something different. Now, what am I going to do different? I was having a conversation with, uh, hello darling. I was having a conversation with, um, I wave back, I can press the button there and I wave back at you. Hey, um, virtually. Um, so I was having a conversation with, um, you could say a mentor of mine actually. There's this um, lady in America whose group, whose painting group that I mean. And um, this is really good. A lady called Tracy Lizotte, if you fancy looking her up. Um, if you're interested in painting yourself. Um, runs a very good uh, academy and lots of training courses and such like. She's very, very good. Very, very informed uh, and works her butt off and just does a load of stuff and still sells off. Anyway, the painting group that I'm in, I put the last two pieces on that I'd done. And I um, I just asked for some feedback. And the feedback that I got was that on the Jade Rising piece, on the one where regular viewers will know what I'm talking about, where I've got the nice lady sat on top of the column. And hello, Fiona. And um, she sort of perched on there. She said that she got that there was a, a re definitely a sort of... Um, earth connection and it looked like the moon was behind her and there were like waves and stuff and everything and that really sort of struck a chord with me and um cheers and um i thought well why don't i do something else with that why don't i take that take that bit of advice and just explore it so that's what we're gonna do um so I've then been searching around for what I can do with this. And because, as I've just pop you around to that again, ta -da, because I've said that all this that's in red there, all that that's in red there, that's all going to be gold and copper leaf with a bit, a tiny bit of silver on it. Because that's all going to be like that. Um, I want something to really make that pop, make that sing. So I've been looking for. Um, a reference that I can use for some sort of landscape. Now, what I thought was, I'm going to uh, put some mountains in the background, and then I can have a sunset behind it. So I can have some oranges and some yellows, and they'll just they'll just be about sort of at this level, I think. And then I can have a nice cloudy sky with the sun reflecting off the bottoms of the clouds. So. Um, there we go, that's the plan. We'll see if it works. Anyway, just so as I can show you what I'm going to use my reference. I've been looking around on Tinternet. Oh, come on, please don't do that to me. There we go. And quite like that image. So I'm going to take that image and I'm going to put it Anyway, let's just plug that little baby back in because I don't want to cut it out on me, which she has a nasty habit of doing. 
I most want it to be active. There we go. A bit of power always helps. Just zoom back into that piece again, just so as I get a better image of it. And that's what we're going to do. So without further ado, I'm going to get to it. However, what I'm also going to do is, so as you can see what I'm actually doing, because you can't see me mixing the paint, but the paint's mixed down there. I'm going to mix the paint on there. So I'm going to lift that up. I'm going to take that piece off. I'm going to add my palette. Ho! Oh, there we go. Now, can you see that? Can you see that? There we go. One palette. One off palette for the use therein. Okay. So, I've already got a bit of purple on there. To be absolutely precise, it is a bit of dioxazine purple. Is that Latin for deep purple? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so, I need some... I think I look at that reference. I need to lighten that up first because I'm going to have to get a coat, coat on there just to smother the black. Get the black out of the way. Because that's just going to overpower everything at the moment. So, I'm going to put some white on there. A bit of white on there. There we go. White added. Done on there. And I think we need more white than purple. So white there. Trusty cloth or kitchen roll. More to the point. Just a dab. A sousson of purple. And away we go. Now already that's looking to be about the right tonality for what I want to achieve. However, it's a little bit too purple. And the more I look at that reference, the more I look at that reference, it wants a little bit of blue in it. So, blue. I've got cobalt blue, French ultramarine marine blue, even, and phthalo blue. I can never pronounce that. P H T H for phthalo, A L O blue, phthalo blue. Let's try and spot that. That's very dark. Hmm, it's a bit too dark. That just looks too dark. So I'm going to go with some. I've got some cerulean blue, and I have some cobalt blue. Cobalt blue hue. That cerulean blue looks suitable so we'll get a bit of that on there and we will apply it to what i've already mixed <coughs> palette knife blue another just a dab it of blue technical term i hope you're paying attention dab it of blue in there and that's not looking too bad at all that's looking pretty damn good. There you go. So we've got that nice colour. Can you see that? Can you see? Can I get the light on that? See, it's messing with the light settings that you can't really see. Okay, it's not coming out too well. Never mind. So that's that. And I think I'm going to mix a fair bit more of that because that's got to cover a lot of that black. So we'll have more white. In fact, I'll put all of that white in. I do love this. This is one of the joys of painting with oils. It's just like mixing something of a buttery consistency. It's just beautiful. It's therapeutic. It's just lovely. There's something about oil paint, the texture of it, <clears throat> the smell of it, the way it goes on the brush, the way it goes on the canvas. Just quite a <clears throat> quite a romantic medium darling it's beautiful it's just beautiful you don't get this well you do not get this with acrylics acrylics are quite sort of unless you've mixed some thickening medium with them they're quite loose to mix 
are quite fluid and they don't get particularly thick and buttery even when you put some thickening medium with them that's got a little bit darker than I would have liked now which to be fair might be okay on the darker tones so what I'm going to do with that I'm going to get some white and get some white and I'm going to put some more white on but I'm going to do what I do when I'm painting flesh tones and I'm only going to blend it with part of that purple so as I get a dark section then I get a light section Gordon Benny it sounds like the man knows what he's talking about who'd have thought it eh Good old me there we go What's that there? Look at that. Beautiful. So lovely. So now we have a dark purple and a light purple. Fortunately, for all the old rockers that are watching, we don't have a deep purple. Adele, thank you for joining. Good evening, hope you're well. All the way from London, Ontario, in Canada. Nice for you to pop by. And there we go. Right then. So actually, multinational this evening. <laughs> We've got Canada on the line and Colton. So we can only have places beginning with the sea by the look of it. So we could have Calgary, Carlisle. Anywhere else we can even see. Constantinople, Canberra. Just, you know, throw some in if you think of any. Right then, let's get this up to a working height. There we go, there we go, there we go. I'll put that down to keep it safe. I'll pop her around there so you can see better. You can see what I'm doing. And we're going to get started. This is where anything can happen in the next half hour as they used to say on an old tv program and and you all look too young to know what i'm talking about so i'll just shut up um right then right then i want a brush of a reasonable size this will do for this application we will be using this brush which is called a filbert it's got a round guess that a round that is on the top <clears throat> as opposed to a square brush so this will give me nice soft edged brush marks so okay get a bit medium on that get some of the darker paint on there i just know i'm going to run out of paint i have to mix some more <clears throat> and where is this going to work where is this going to fit now what i'm probably going to end up doing here is i'm going to go over that bit at some point but that doesn't matter because that's just got to have the gold leaf on it and that can paint over that later but i want to try and keep away from the ballerina because I don't want to paint out because I'm really happy with that but it's going to happen so I might as well just get on with it so if I very roughly want the land to finish about there because that's put a mark across straight across it and then I'm going to want the sun to finish around about here just put that very lightly put that in there that'll go up and down a bit more so a bit more serious about it and then the sun's going to finish around right there so the base of the sky is going to start there that's where the sky is going to start and that's where the mountains are going to end and then i'm going to come down and i'm going to have the mountains finishing base level about let's just say about there so i'll just put that in there nice and straight line there we go so we've got ground mountains sun sky Again. that was an executive decision it's always so decisive paint get on there now this is more than likely going to take a couple of coats because that black as irritating as it is is um quite prominent and it will take some covering off so all this is going to be have to be reapplied the beauty of this this these colors for those of you at the back who are paying attention do you always do your background last question mark well actually that's a very good question thank you for asking it Adele. actually 
intend to do it first, but I've basically made a mistake because the reference piece that I'd seen that inspired me to paint this piece in the first instance had a ballerina in a different pose. This is this pose is off uh, a model I've been painted with for a little bit while now, but with some material flowing out behind her in a different format on a black background with a grey base. And I thought I really like that because it will make the gold really, really um, stand out. However, since I've applied it, I don't like it. So I'm not going to bother. Good evening, Alice. Thanks for popping by. Um, so. No mistakes, Adele says. I can't guarantee that, Adele. I cannot guarantee that. I'm pretty good at making mistakes. We do it all my life, so I'm not going to stop now. A bit more medium on that. It's not going on too well. It's a little bit solid. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on. So I've got basically like a base coat. And this will take out most of the black. And then I'll go over it with more detail for clouds that the sun's reflecting off them. And put oranges and such on it and whatnot. But what I need to do first off is get a good coat of this on. So as I've got something to work with and work around. That's the general idea. Careful around this bit. Been told I can't make any mistakes. Very careful. Oh, this is the scary part. It's looking a right mess at the minute, this is now. But it's all going to be good. It's all going to come good in the end. Power of positive thought. Can't wait to see how it turns out. Neither can I, actually. Neither can I, Adele. It's just so exciting and scary in equal measure. going to look fabulous with the gold and the copper so that's the bit that's the really exciting bit for me when I get to put the gold leaf on and get that on the go that will really be that will just make it go ping it will just ping it will just pop right off the canvas In there it's going to take quite a bit of paint this is because as much as I'm putting this on I can just see the black still coming through but what this does show you is that with oil paint there's always a route out always a route out excuse me for leaning over the painting while you're watching I just want to paint that side be gone in a minute, just just talk on yourselves for a while. There you go, done. I'll give me one over here. Get this chair out of the way. That's that side done because I know what's going on gonna happen. I get to the end and I go, God, oh, that looks fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. But then I realise I haven't painted the sides or the top or the bottom. It's a boring bit. So, without further ado, just get that done. I always get a desire to sort of sing and hum and whistle nondescript tunes when I'm doing this because this is the this is just the you know the process bit. Just do this, do that, do the other. Don't forget this. Don't forget that. What's that? Go away. Mm. 
nearly there, bit more, bit more. There you go, that will do. That'll do for the first coat. Now we have to put that back down and leave two nice round rings on what I've just painted, but I can get rid of that later. So, I'm not going to keep you there while I go all around the profile because you're just going to get bored. I get bored painting, so you're going to get bored. Burning but necessary. Indeed. Indeed, 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 indeed. Right. Sun's coming along there. Sun's coming along there. So that's going to be the sun. Okay. I just get lost myself sometimes in where I actually am with the piece. Just trying to make that a little bit more uniform. Before I go on to another bit. That'll pay dividends later. Across there. And down there. There we go. Happy enough with that. So that's going to be a nice purpley sort of sunset sky. So I'll have some dark elements in that. And I'll have some orange affecting off the base of the clouds in there. So it's going to take a little bit of a while to do because all this has got to dry before I put the different layers on. But there we go, that's that on the go. Just get all the paint off the brush and put it where it should be, you know, i.e. on the canvas. There we go. Right, rub that in the turps, clean the brush off. There we go. Get that off there. Dry that off with a bit of kitchen roll. Done. Right, that's that done. That's that clean out. Right, okay. So, now I want the sun to be on the bottom of the clouds all along there. Excuse me. Is this tonic water? And it is tonic water, by the way. No gin involved. Just tonic water. What's it I'll say? Not your work, what you're doing, but when you you have to fiddle with the sides and edge. Uh -huh, indeed. Fiddle is the opposite word. Right then, okay, so it's now going to be sunset time. So I'm going to build this up with orange and yellow. To be more exact, cadmium orange hue. Sounds like a nickname for one of your mates, doesn't it? Cadmium orange hue. All right, here. Where's it going? And cadmium yellow hue. No, no, Jim. I'm trying to keep off it for a little bit while, especially when I'm doing this. You know, I don't want to get half cut halfway through my painting demonstration. I look too good, would it really? But yeah, Jim can come later. It can be gin o'clock at about eight o'clock. Okay, so we've got cadmiums, orange and yellow, and I'm just going to bring them together a bit on my palette. That orange is very strong, very strong. That orange is way too strong. Need some more yellow on that. I'm going to bring that down. It's far too, far too luminous. So now I'm going to end up with, now I'm going to paint this area with the sun. I don't need as much paint. But because I'm going to have to put a lot more yellow in that to bring the colour down, I'm going to have a load of orange where I uh, would have preferred less. But never mind, it doesn't matter. So this is just going to, again going to be a base. I'm going to stick a different. I'm going to stick a different yellow on this. Cadmium yellow pale. So that may have a better effect on quieting that orange down. Because this orange is very orange, that's better. Oh, that's better. There you go. Way look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. So that's going to go in all around there. Look at that. 
do love knife painting. Missed it actually. I have missed it, but that's not where I'm at at the moment. And if I learnt anything whilst I've been doing this over the past few months, tell, tell. One has to be consistent. You have to keep doing the thing that you do. So, right then. Bit of medium. In fact, I'm running out of medium. I need to get some more. Right then. Orange. So now I'm putting that on straight away and the, the black's still coming through it. So it's got to go on pretty thick. In fact, she's going to go on pretty thick. Because as much as I'm painting the orange on, the brush is just lifting it back up again. Put that around the edge. So what I've basically done here is create, created myself a load of extra work. Hey, hey, don't we just love it? But it's got to be right. It's absolutely got to be right. And I have big hopes for this painting. So, if it's going to be done right, I'm going to do it right. No mess about. That down there. Down there. To there. Because black is just so strong. But a couple of coats of this should sort that out. Onto there and round the corner. There we go. It's just starting to give it a little bit of definition, a little bit of shape. The one thing I am going to do is I'm just going to go because I haven't got so much to do on that from a profile perspective. I'm just going to go around that if you don't mind. Just going to go around that. Have fun, I'm off. Well, thanks for dropping by, Dal. I appreciate it very much. I really do. I'll have to drop in on a few of your live videos again. I haven't, haven't seen you painting for a while, so I must get to must get back on it. Looking forward to seeing it all come together. Yeah, me too. Like I say, thanks for dropping in. And put that down there. Down there. In fact, what I could do with this now is I could take that down there like that take that down there and bring that down like that bring that down like that so that sunset's now just got bigger because I want the want to put the top of the mountains in where they're gonna where they're gonna live. There's a very famous painter that I admire greatly once said. A gentleman by the name of Bob Ross, you may have heard of him. American guy, big hair, he always used to say, happy little mountains, put a little mountain in there and he needs a friend so I'm just going to drop another mountain just right next to him. So I think Bob Ross is actually the guy who, well, I'm going to say invented for want of a better word, but he sort of invented this what I'm doing now, painting life. He was very, very good at it. Got lots of little cheats along the way. Because even though he painted a picture in half an hour, half an hour, half an hour programme every week, he got one, excuse me, put my head in the way, Bob would never do this, it's so unprofessional. He got one that um, just out of shot of the camera, I can assure you, as you can see, I haven't, that he'd, um, that he got, that he was, um, Used as a reference, that he'd already painted a pretty good one, as a matter of fact. So I'm just going to 
get rid of my brush marks on that, I don't like those. Just making it more harder for myself. So now, now you can see, now I'll put that in. Excuse me, sir. Now that I've put that in, you can see where the mountain range is going to sit. Well, I eventually get it all done. I think I was an artist. Put that around the side. There we go. Can you see that? Does that look like it's actually gaining some depth? I think it is. I really do. I'm not just saying that. Anyway, a bit more tonic. All this talking to you guys, it's actually quite thirsty work. There we go. So now, now we need the back of the mountain range, and that's going to be deep purple. <coughs> and cue the deep purple intro. Bow 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 bow. bow, bow. <coughs> you can tell I was always a fantastic air guitarist. Um, brush. What brush shall I use? What brush are you going to use, me? Speak up at the back. Um, mm, what brush shall I use? I'm, I'm only going to map this in for the time being. I'm just going to map it in. So, first of all, I'm going to get some medium. Here we go. Medium tub. Medium. Spoon jar, jar spoon, as Tommy Cooper used to say. And a suitable applicator get this one there we go a nice number six round number six round there we go and medium and dark deep purple now this is just going to look like black in fact what i'm going to do i'm going to mix it with the previous purple that i had so as i'm taking a bit of the black out of it Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. That just started to look like an Arizona desert to you. Just to me. I can almost hear the banjos playing. That's a bad thing, right? Badling dong ding dong ding dong ding. Even though that film wasn't set in Arizona, so I don't know why I'm doing that really. It's just the vibe that I got. A bit more medium, a bit more paint, a bit more light purple, a bit more dark purple. See, hopefully, now, just starting to get the impression that there's a three dimensional depth. Three dimensional depth to the piece. Just around the corner again, so excuse me. Down there. There we go. That's my little old mountain range. That can come around there. I just love the effects you can get with a decent brush and the way that it just gives the impression of something other than a brush stroke it's just what's beautiful about doing this it's a drug it's so addictive so addictive then down there
Now eventually we'll get that effect up there when I mixing where the clouds are going to be. Because that doesn't look very purple to me anymore. Now that I'm getting this on. Bit more of that, bit more medium, bit more purple. And I need one little stick. Oh, come here. Here we go. Mind your legs, darling. I'm just going to paint down the side. Oh, this doesn't tickle. Now hopefully as well, now that I'm doing this, I'm really breaking the piece up because there's now there's already lots lots more going on, lots more interest. It won't make the piece, sorry, the ballerina, it won't make the ballerina look like she's just stuck on the front of the, the black anymore, which will be excellent. That's exactly what I want because I didn't like the look of that at all. So, if I don't like it, it's getting changed. Because we can't have that, can we? No, we can't, Vince. So, just put that down there. I'm just going to use my trusty stick. Where would I be without my trusty stick? There we go. Bit more profile on that. And round the edge again. Da, 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 da. Okay, I can fill in the rest of that now. Can fill in the rest of that. Liking the contrast. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very kind. That's what I'm aiming for. Heavy contrast. Because if you've all been paying attention, which I sincerely hope you have, because I will be asking questions one day, um, you'll notice that I love colour. And I do like to apply colour. Um, Colour is what it's all about. This is basically, doing this is one, stressful, two, infuriating, three, both of the above times ten, and four, uh, fun. The fun bit does come into it at some point, but it has to be fun. There's no point doing this, because it's hard enough as it is. There is no point doing this if it isn't fun. If I don't get a buzz and a kick out of this, what is the point? So that's why it is what it is, because you need to enjoy it, because it is very frustrating at times when something doesn't go right, when the paint's not going on properly, and you get into some fine detail and you sneeze and you miss a bit, and all of these things. So you've got to have a bit of fun with it, it's got to be enjoyable. It always gets me when you're doing this. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, I'm joking now and all the rest of it. And this bit is actually, now I'm really getting into it, a lot more fun than it was about two months ago when I first started doing it, when I was basically bricking myself for an hour. But now, because, you know, it's just these way it is, and it's just, I'm just painting and talking. I'm multitasking. Did you hear that? I'm actually multitasking. You should take note of that. Um... It's not that hard really, just as long as you're just doing stuff like this, it's when I get to do the tricky bits that I actually can't talk. And then that's when I could understand if you switched off. And the point I was going to make, as I interrupted myself, which I keep being told I'm pretty good at, the point I was going to make was that um, people say to me, that looks so relaxing. Oh, yeah, that must be really relaxing doing all that sort of stuff. I can tell you it isn't, it's just not relaxing at all. 
because one brush stroke can just change the whole thing just completely change everything you've done for the last hour two hours two weeks one little brush stroke and it's oh my goodness or words to that effect and you have to start working on something again so relaxing it ain't now i hope that you can see that you've now got a mountain range going across there there's a sunset behind it and then there's the clouds which are going to get broken up because that's what i can see and that's what it's going to be that's that there that's that brush nice and clean so now here's the tricky bit here is the tricky bit i have to i'll have it super tight first have to decide now is I'm going bear with me just bear with me I need to take a little bit of a look at this does that look does that look straight well, I'm not entirely sure that line looks straight so I either need to make it straight so that's straight to me so I'm a little bit yeah okay I'm just going to straighten that up a bit I don't like the way that's looking. Another technical adjustment is required. I get the rule out. So what have I got there? There I have 21. And there I have 19. Not good. So get the purple back out again. I'm glad I spotted that. So 19. I want that to I want that to be bigger bit there. So I'll just pop that down there. Get my trusty stick. Ah, oh, look at this. Corrections on the fly. Amazing. Amazing. Get that to there. Get that to there. And I'm just going to run that. Rotate the brush as I go down. Oops, slip slightly. Slip slide down. There you go, there's the base. Look at that. Wasn't that amazing, boys and girls? I'm amazed I actually spotted that when I was just looking at it. You have to be very careful with these things. It's a bit too dark. A bit of dark, a bit of light, a bit of dark, a bit of light. So. Stick. Stick. Okay, and the side. And the side. So this now is giving me a lovely effect of the sun setting on some distant on a distant mountain range. And the thing is, what I'm painting here is commonly known. In artistic circles, as aerial perspective. So rather than linear perspective, which is when you've got two train lines that start off there, and then as they go further, oh, actually, they, no, they start off there, and then as they go further away, they get close together. That's linear perspective. Now, aerial perspective is when you look at something at a distance. And it's a different colour to what you know it actually really is. Now you know that mountains aren't purple. Because you did that at school. That's if you turned up on the mountains day. And so you have to make them look like they're in the distance. Because if the sun's setting behind them, then they're not going to be brown, are they? No, because you're looking through. These mountains are quite away in the distance. And you're looking through a lot of air to get to the mountains there. Does that look does that look square? That looks a lot better. I'm happy with that. Um 
Yeah, you're looking for a lot of fresh air to get to the mountains. So before you see the mountains, there's a whole lot of fresh air in the way. And that changes basically everything to blue. Just puts it to blue. So if you want to paint something in the distance, you need to, one, remove the sharpness. Two, add more blue to it. And sometimes paint it lighter with more white in it so it becomes more sort of dusky. And then... It looks like you've placed it in the distance and then you are doing what I love to do making a 3d object off a 2d environment or gin well sorry oops or tonic and now now we come to the hard bit. What am I going to do with this foreground? What am I going to do with this foreground? And that is a nice, a nice, on that reference, it's a nice grey kind of colour. Grey purple. So what I think I'm going to do, in fact it's a lot lighter. There's quite a bit of scrub. Quite a bit of scrub in there. So I could have, I could have, maybe somewhere to, bleeding up into this quite a bit of sort of scrub to break that line up and then I can paint that in a sort of a, a lighter grey mm. so this is the hard bit this is where it's not relaxing I'm happy with the mountains happy with the way they're looking I'm happy enough with the orange for the sunset. Um, but I need to do something with this foreground. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm not really quite sure what to do because that colour, that colour on that reference just looks a little bit off. But I'm going to have to do something. And I'm going to cover it up if you don't like it. So here we go, this is the stressful part now, because I've got to make a decision on the colour, so what are we going to do? First I'm going to clean brushes, because that's quite stress relieving. Um, I need to mix myself a nice, light, purpley grey. So, purple has some blue in it. So I'm going to get a little bit of, a little bit of Payne's Grey, I think. Or shall I use some Thalo Blue? I'll keep using Payne's Grey. And it basically can send things muddy if you're not careful. So I'm going to get some Thalo Blue. For Thalo Blue. Put that in. Now already that's just looking to, looking to aquamarine type blue. No, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Clean another brush. I'm getting very dirty tonight. There's lots of brushes with lots of paint on them. You can't leave them. You've got to get them clean. Clean that one off. Um, right then, right then. Right, monkey. Where's my Payne's Grey gone? There it is. Oh no, I don't, or do I want Payne's Grey? Bit of Payne's Grey, I think, because that's that can make some decent grey. Just a smudge of that. And a bit of Prussian blue as well, I think, because that, there we go, come to daddy, Prussian blue. That almost looks like a black. It's actually a very, very, very dark blue. Just a touch of that. And what I now need is more white. Where's my white gone? There it is. More white. And... Plenty of white going on there already. It's a bit more white there, and now I'm going to mix them up. So, another white over there. <coughs> Just you know, talking with myself for a while. Um, clean that off. So, what I need to investigate, I need to investigate making the camera movable. So, as I can actually be mixing paints and such. 
whilst talking to you darlings. It's got a little bit blue, so I'm going to put a bit of Prange, Prange Grey in there. There we go, that's making it a nice bluey grey. It's almost what that is. What I now need, what I now need, is a bit of purple. A bit of purple on that to bring that round to the colour that I want. So I'm taking the purple off what I've just mixed. That needs to be darker, so I'm going to get the actual purple rather than the mixed purple, which is lighter. Not too bad. It's looking very much like what I've just been painted, out, so that's not really very good. Um, get clean that, clean that. Um... So this is the nice bit, and also the frustrating bit about doing the painting as well, because trying to mix the colours can be quite difficult and tricky. Um, what should I get onto there? I'm going to put some more paint grey on that. That should go darker now. But basically be a very purple grey. Purple grey, purple grey. There we go. Now if I just put some white on that, that should give me the kind of colour that I'm looking for. So it's like a muddy kind of, kind of purple grey. Put some white on there. It's not looking too bad at all. Purple grey. There we go. Right, brush. Brush, he shouted. Give me a brush. Give me the right brush. That looks too thick. Although, for that, that probably won't hurt. There's quite an area there, so we're going to give that a go. Right, let's get a bit of medium on there. Get the paint on the brush. There we go. So immediately getting rid of that line. Well, I'm going to just look at the way this is going on there. I can see that I'm going to need an intermediate ground between those mountains and that, that there because the change is too dramatic. I need something, even though I can blend that in, like that. I need something to take me from the foreground to the background. Because at the moment, there's nothing. And it's just looking a little bit sort of undernourished, for want of a better word. Working, it's working, he says, hopefully. I love the fact this just makes such a lovely noise, which I'm absolutely certain you can hear. I just love the noise that that makes. Looking okay, not looking too bad there, not looking too bad. See again, this is just going on, I'm not really throwing this on, really wiping this on. Get off, the nasty hair there. Probably one of all these. Um, it isn't one of mine. It's a lump there as well, come on, get off. Um, whilst I'm throwing this on, this is just the base coat for the background. All the foreground actually. I'm liking the way it's looking. There's plenty of work to go on with this, plenty of work to go on. Down the side. There 
have a look at the time. 55 minutes, five minutes to go. So I have to get these videos in under an hour. Because if I don't, then I can't put them on Instagram. I've still not fully worked out how to do that. But to be honest with you, an hour is enough. For you guys as well as me. So, I will just tidy up around her feet, just fetch the paint off the brush. I'll just redefine her feet. There we go. Right, brush, 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 medium, medium, paint, paint, stick, stick, stick on there, and just get on with it. So bring that down to the back of the car. See, I'll stop talking again to get into a serious bit. around the back of the heel and the sole of her shoe I'm going to be careful that's going out because I lost part of the shoe when I put the brown on the first time I don't want to I'm just going to go around about there really. don't want to cut the shoe off too much Okay, a bit more paint, touch of medium, a bit more paint. Down the front of his shin. There we go. Top of her foot. There and around the bottom. Yeah. There we go. Just fetch that across the front of there. There we have it. So, one transformation partially done. Just the detail needed to, to finish off, as you can see. So, what I've done tonight, I've painted over the black, which I didn't like, and the grey. We've got sky going in there, sun there, mountain range, nice drop down to a grey base, which is sand and desert. It's grey because of the sunshine. That's going to be a lot brighter. And then I hold the gold on there. So I'll just show you for the reference again so you can see where I'm going with this. So that's all the sanders. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Well, there you go. And because it'll have now come out of it. But you can see so you've got that to that. And that's what it's going to look like. And that's what the background is. That's the basics of the background. Just put that down there. Anyway. And that, my pedigree chums, is that. So, an area of painting again. I changed it over completely so you can just see that you can always change something. You can always make a difference. You can change something. Make, an, make a... Hello. You can make changes to it. And if you don't like it, it can be modified. Fundamentally, it has to be quality. It has to be correct. It has to be right. If it ain't right and I'm not satisfied with it, it's not going to be finished. It'll work, I'll work on it for a while until I get to what I want to do. And if I still don't like it, then it'll get broken and thrown in the bin. Because if it's not working, it's not working. But I'm happy with this now. This is I've still got some 
plenty of love left for this piece um, because I just want to get the gold. I want to, I want to do all the, the gold highlights and I want to do the copper, the copper low lights. That will be really interesting to do. So I need to persevere with this. The next thing I'm going to do now when all this is dried in a few days, I can work on all of it as a whole, as a whole unit again. And I can bring some of the parts forward and I can take some of the other parts back. All to do with the different light tones of the colours. Okay, so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. I have. Uh, it's been great to have you all along. Catch on the replay if you can. If you can, give me a hashtag replay so that you watched it. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Cheers.